So with this question, I know that you can't see everything very clearly. Some of you might be able to, but for some it might be a bit fuzzy or whatever. Um, but we are going to split the questions up. I just wanted you to see everything, but we are going to split it up like that. You see, it's going to look a lot nicer over there, over there, over there, and over there. Okay, so five questions in total. So here we begin. So it says that Lection approached two car rental companies. Um, okay, so that's the person's name. Interesting name. Lection approached two car rental companies to look for a specific car to rent for three days. That because he wants to visit his brother who's called Touch <laughs> in Jeffrey's Bay. So Lection is gonna visit Touch, and so Lection needs to find a car. So he goes to two different companies, company A and company B, and He's obviously going to try to see which company is cheaper, for example. Okay, so the first question says, write down the amount that he will pay for excess charges. Okay, now excess charges, let me just tell you what they are, just so you have an idea. So, for example, I went to visit my mom in Durban um, last year. So that was in 2022. So I don't know, you could be watching this in like... It could be in future time. I don't know. But yeah, in 2022, me and my brother, we took a flight from Cape Town to Durban, where my mom lives. And when we landed, we needed to get ourselves a car. We needed to rent a car. So what they will do is they will tell you, um, first of all, they're going to ask you for a deposit. Okay, that's this one over here. So they're going to ask you to give them 18,650 Rand and they will give that back to you when you come back and the car is in good condition and nothing has gone wrong. But if you decide to steal the car or if you something goes wrong or whatever, then they might not give you all of this money back. They might use some of it to help them like to 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 try fix the car or whatever so it makes it makes them feel a little bit safer because you could just steal the car but by paying the 18000 rand they have a less chance of things going wrong for example okay i mean of course things can go wrong but there's a less chance so that's the first thing that you have to pay they will give it back to you when you get back so that's not money that you're actually spending they will give it back the other one is called an excess charge now this you don't actually pay anything on the day that you take the car the excess you can ask your parents if they have car insurance um, you can ask them what excess is, but what it is, is let's say you have a car accident, okay? You, let's say you go rent someone's car and you crash the car. Now, let's say that the crash total comes up to 70,000 Rand. That's to fix the car and all of that. You are not going to have to pay 70,000 Rand thankfully, because of things called insurance. The insurance company will pay at that 70,000, or they'll pay out most of it, but you, as the person who was responsible and who crashed the car, you're gonna have to pay that amount over there. You're gonna have to pay the excess, okay? So yeah, the excess is an amount that you will pay only if something goes wrong. You don't have to pay that amount on the day. It's not the same as a deposit. A deposit you have to pay on the day and you'll get it back when you bring the car back. But an excess will only be charged if you damage the car, for example. Okay? Or sometimes what they'll do is you give them the 18,650, then you crash the car, then they're just gonna take your, they're just gonna take 17,000 Rand from this amount over here, and then they'll give you back whatever's left over. That's also sometimes something that they do. Okay, so it says write down the amount that you'll pay for excess, 17,000. Okay, now if Lection uses company A, and damages the car after being involved in an accident, calculate the amount that he will claim back from the deposit. So think about this. Lection uses company A, crashes the car, he then takes the car back, and it's all damaged and buckled and everything, and he says to them, hey guys, I've bought your car back, can I please have my deposit? They're gonna say, no, 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 no. You damaged our car, so we are gonna take 17,000 Rand, away and we will give you whatever's left. So the amount of money that will be left will be 18,650 minus 17,000 and you will be left with 
1,650 Rand. That is the amount that he will be able to get back. So it says calculate the amount that he will claim back from the security deposit. That is the amount that he will claim back, okay? He'll tell them, okay, fine, I'm sorry I damaged your car. Take the 17,000, but give me back whatever's still left over. And that's the 1,650. Okay, now remember the questions carry on. We still have this one, this one, and this one, okay? Um, right, so it says, give a reason why most car rental companies only rent out cars to people who have enough credit on their credit cards. Well, it's just a bit of a safety thing. Um, you're not gonna rent it out to someone who's, you know, like their credit card is completely, they've used up their credit card completely and they don't have any extra money. Um, because if something goes wrong, and let's say, for example, they steal the car, they're gonna wanna, they, they already have the deposit, but they're gonna wanna try to get more of the money back. But if the person has doesn't have enough money on their credit card, they won't be able to get it back. So that is why they ask you to give a credit card, so that if anything goes wrong, they can actually take the money off that credit card immediately, okay? So it's a safety for them. So, because otherwise, let's say someone rents a car and they've got no money on their credit card, then they crash the car, um, or sorry, not crash the car because they already have that in the deposit, but let's say, um, let's say for example, uh, oh, for example in company A, you pay for how many kilometers you drive. You see how you pay here, three rand, and then this is how many kilometers you are gonna drive. But you only pay that when you get back. You only pay that when you get back to, um, or this might not be three, uh, oh no, I think it is three rand. Yeah, three rand. Um, okay, so it doesn't really matter, but the, they, for however far you drove, you're gonna have to pay for all of that when you get back. Now what happens if a person gets back there and they say, Hi, oh, election. Um, you need to pay us two thousand three hundred or two thousand or let's say seven hundred rand for the amount of driving that you did. And they look at Lection's credit card and there's nothing. What are they gonna do? Well, they're gonna have to take Lection to court and they're gonna have to yeah, and that's gonna cost a lot of money and they're just not gonna get their money back. But by renting it out to someone who already has enough money on their credit card, it gives them a higher they have a better chance of being safe. Okay, so we can say here, to ensure that they can recover any money as quickly as possible. Moving on, Lection traveled 950 kilometers for the three days that he hired the car. He stated that it would have been cheaper if he used company B instead of company A. For five marks, verify his statement. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go look at company A, and then we'll look at company B and see how much each one would have cost. So if he uses company A, he's gonna pay this amount over here, Plus, now they don't make it very clear in this question, and I found that a bit weird, um, but you need to somehow have known, did they maybe tell us on the in the beginning? Um, no, they didn't. So yeah, that's really strange. Um, but this is the number of kilometers that you drive. Number of kilometers driven, okay? So we're gonna say plus three, multiplied by, now the number of kilometers is 950, so we're gonna say 950 minus 600, then go ahead and type that all in on the calculator, and what you would find is that company A would charge 3,390 Rand and 90 cents, okay? Now for company B, you literally just pay a once-off amount. They don't charge you extra for the amount of driving that you do. So you're just gonna pay 3220.65. Now, this number is larger than this number. So he is correct That's that that uh, company A, or um, well he says that company, he said it would have been cheaper if he used company B. That is correct. So we can say that the statement is valid. Now, that's not gonna get you five marks. The five marks is by showing all of that, okay? So, this one says, give a possible reason why there was a difference in the rental cost 
at the different times in January. So from the 5th to the 7th of January, that is the rental cost over there. And then between the 13th and the 16th, that is the rental cost over there. So can you see that it's cheaper over here? Now, one of the reasons could be that we know that around Christmas time, New Year's, people are on holiday. People are traveling, people are flying. Um, there's lots of people touring different cities. And so there's gonna be lots of demand for rental cars. So the way that any business makes money during those times is they simply put the price up. When demand increases, they can put the price up. Okay, whereas on the between the 13th and 16th, well, that is usually a time of year where everyone's gone back to work, back to school. There's not a lot of people on holiday, and so your demand for rental cars is not as much, and so they have to lower the prices. And so we could say here, there was a higher, there was a higher demand for rentals from 5th to 7th. 